work, Justin. <laughs> Don't even want to think about it. So how do we get back over? All that hydraulic energy just going down this tree. Or hydro energy. It's all the country stones. And it went into this elevator right here. It is a French burr stone. And this slide gate latch four-sided real bolter. It's mortise and tenon right here with a peg holding it all together. The wooden tooth slides into the mortises on the, the steel mortise wheel. A separate structure from the building itself. You can see where it's marked the wood from swinging back and forth. I think a water wheel is a 20 foot. <laughs> Howdy folks, this is Justro at Metcalf Mills. I'm down at the McKinney Water Mill today, looking around and I wanted to take you inside and show you some of what's left of how this thing works. Let's get in there. Now the way this mill worked, the mill stones that was on this spindle, it's what you call the country stones. It's a native granite stone that they use for corn. And there was a third run of mill stones in this building. There was three runs of stone. The third set, which was about here, was not in use. There was no spindle, only the stones. And this set of stones is a French burr stone, and that was what was used for the wheat. And the wheat would be poured into this hopper, and it come down into a cleaning shoe, and this was powered by this little pulley right here. And it was just a cam eccentric that made the shoe shake and the wheat went through a screen and it went into this elevator right here. So this elevator caught the clean wheat, took it upstairs and it spouted over to a smutter or a wheat scour over in this area upstairs, which would take the smut off of the wheat and clean it up good. And uh, the offals from that went out this wooden chute to the outside, through the wall, to the outside. The clean wheat would come down into this garner and this slide gate latch would send the clean wheat into the hopper above the millstones. After the wheat was milled, it would come out the spout, right there, into this elevator leg, and it would take it up and send it down into the real bolter four-sided real bolter that's in the bolting cabinet that you can see. A 
That's a Bolton cabinet right there. You can see the reel inside of it. It had the Bolton silk on it. And that's what bolted the flyer. The flyer would come down to this spout right here. That's where they would catch the flyer. Two grades of it, or one grade, depending on how they silk the bolter. And over here was the brand and shorts spouts. Can't really see the smutter upstairs. It's too much in the way. The main, for this gear train on this mill, the main shaft from the water wheel comes right through here and runs these back pulleys. Right here, you've got a mortise wheel. This is a wooden tooth mortise wheel that meshes with a cast iron bevel gear to change the direction of the shaft from horizontal to vertical, right here. Now the way this works, it was always the goal to never have wood on wood, although they did in the olden days because that's all they had, but later on it was, they tried to go more wood on metal. Whatever metal on metal or wood on wood, wood on metal was always best. The wood would wear and it could be replaced and your metal gear, your metal gear would pretty much never wear out because it had such a light wear from the wood. Now the way these teeth work is you've got these pins that slip in between them. So the wooden tooth slides into the mortises on the the steel mortise wheel and they're wedge shaped and you got these pins that go in there and wedge them into place every tooth has a wedge it holds it in place these three drive pulleys right here best i can tell this top one's busted but the top drive pulley went to the wooden pulley on the french burr stones right here a belt went across to this uh i think the middle pulley right here went to the country stones to this wooden drive pulley on the spindle the vertical shaft that went upstairs, this pulley I think was maybe drove by the bottom pulley here. I think that's how they went according to the shaft sizes and everything. That's what it that's what it looks to me like. The adjustment on these stones, it's a later design. The tram box is factory made, maybe by Nordyke and Marmon or somebody like that. This is the footstep bearing for the French burr stones. Right here's a, the footstep bearing for the country stones. The way this works, the bridge tree is cast iron, steel, and it's got the rod that goes up to the milling floor. You got a threaded end with a hand wheel on it, which raises and lowers the millstone. If you've been watching my videos, you know from my little mill that I built, that's how you adjust millstones. I don't know what year they started using these factory made footstep bearings, tram boxes, but they're old. It's 
I'm sure it's 1800s, maybe early 19s, but I doubt it. The big Hearst frame. See how they dovetailed? They dovetail the beams in for the Hearst frame. Now the country stones, they set right here on top of this. This is the spindle shaft. This is called the cock head right here. And inside the millstones, there's a balance rind that sits down over this, and it balances the millstone. And there's a driver that goes in the center of the millstone. It goes down over this square part, and that's what drives the millstone. They have to be perfectly balanced and running balance and standing balance. This was a jack shaft that they thought was maybe used during war times to run a generator so they could mill at night. There was two gates that slid in here for two grades of flare. Right here you can see out the water wheel out here. So the water wheel had a big master wheel, master gear, that drove a jack shaft with a big pulley here. That big pulley goes over to a drive pulley. I'm guessing at what you're seeing, so I hope you can see what I'm talking about. And that main drive pulley over there comes through the back wall of the mill here. Right there and it drives all those pulleys back there that we were looking at it drives this one right here all the way across to the vertical pulleys this hearse frame it's a separate struct separate structure from the building itself because you didn't want the vibration of the machinery to shake the building down. So the hearse frame that holds the millstones was all a separate, a separate unit. It was built separate from the building. You can see they got some big X bracing on here, all mortised and tenoned with wooden pegs. How good you can see right here, but. See how it's all just collapsed in, but it's mortise and tenon right here with a peg holding it all together. Here's a spout coming out of the French burr stones. And when the the gram flare, the whole wheat flare come out of the French burr stones that went into the elevator that you can see going up right here, that wooden tube with the side cover off, and it took it upstairs and sent it down into that real bolter that we looked at a minute ago to be separated out. So when the flare come out of the French burr stones, it went down in the elevator, caught it, the elevator leg, took it up and sent it down to the four-sided real bolter chamber. There's a John Deere, I think it's a Deere corn sheller up here that they used later on to shell corn with. It said that this mill was built first up the creek. It's 1860. I don't, this is not 1860, but I don't know what year this part was built, but it was built on up the creek and they moved it down to this spot at some time. Now this ship wheel right here was for the gate on the water wheel. So I can get in here where you can see clearly. So there's a, a gear on the shaft you can see there. And this little flip latch right here, 
flipped over. You can see where it's marked the wood from swinging back and forth. It flipped over and locked into the gears to hold the water wheel gate in place. So you'd turn this wheel and it raises the gate outside. I'll show you how that works. And you flip that latch over to hold it in place when you get it set where you want it. I think a water wheel is a 20 footer, I think, if I remember right. And I'd say this gear wheel right here is maybe a 12 footer. And this big jack shaft flat belt pulley is probably a eight footer maybe. So as the water wheel shaft turns, this master wheel bull gear drove the pinion wheel, which drove the this master wheel for the belt, went over to that main drive pulley that went inside the mill that I showed you inside there. The shaft coming out upstairs off of the ship's wheel, right there, goes out this rack and pinion and as you turn the ship's wheel it raises the gate to open the four bay to put water onto the wheel right here and this was worked on about from what I understand 30 years ago and I imagine they built this new flume and built this gate and all this stuff. A lot of it's incorrectly done. And even down to when they replaced these buckets on the water wheel, they're incorrectly done and not made to function properly. The four bay is not correctly done. There's several things that's not right. But anyway, hopefully one day this thing might have new life. Hopefully. This is where the earthen mill race comes down and a culvert goes under the road, comes out right here, runs down to the four bay to go onto the water wheel.